Governor Mike Huckabee has seen it all. Politically savvy, elected office, commentator, host of Huckabee on TBN. Uh, Governor, welcome back. Thank you, Brian. You know that uh, insurance commercial that says, we've uh, learned a few things because we've seen a few things. Well, it's kind of like that with the Trump deal. Even the Washington Compost is now beginning to understand that Donald Trump is being targeted not because of something that offends the sensibilities of New Yorkers. It's because that Letitia James targeted him before she ever even took office. And she's just keeping her campaign promise and trying to uh, make life miserable for the uh, once and perhaps soon to be again president. Why do you think he is out, has been at court the last three days? I think what you just described is exactly the reason. This way, he controls the story. He's in charge of the narrative and not this uh, judge who sits up there on his uh, desk and preens for the camera. I've never seen anything quite like that before. Invites the camera's end and takes off his glasses and rears his head back and flashes a big smile like he's auditioning for a bit part in a cheap movie. I've never seen a judge behave that way. There's something called decorum. I hope he doesn't call Donald Trump down for lack thereof, because this is a judge who has clearly displayed that for him, this is just an audition for something, whatever it is he thinks he wants to do. So it's okay. Uh, In the spring, we'll put him in jail, but in the fall, we'll take his money. That's what it seems like. While his his numbers seem to go up in the general and the people that should be almost as angry as this should be the other people running for the nomination. No matter what they say, what they do, how many debates they have. It's all about Trump. Well, one of the reasons that guys like me back in 2016 uh, really barely got the wheels up under the plane and took off from the runway was because Donald Trump knows how to dominate the news cycle. He's a master at it. And he obliterated everyone else on that stage, all 16 of us. And he did it because he understands how to keep the story away from anyone but himself. And I admire him for that. I'm not complaining. I'm thinking... This guy is really good. And he parlayed it into uh, the presidency. And so I say good for him. Uh, but it does make it very difficult for any of the other candidates to uh, to get attention because all the oxygen in the room has been soaked up by the 44th president. You're yeah, the big story. Uh, Hunter, of, of course, going to court yesterday on the gun charges, could be facing 25 years in jail. We know he won't. Uh, and maybe he shouldn't. You know, he uh, on drugs. Uh, on drugs, bought a gun, lied on the form. Uh, for five years, they investigated. It must have been really, really, I got to just admire that type of focus. Every day getting up, studying this case. Uh, and they finally find out that they, after his deal blows up, that they're going to charge him with something. Governor Huckabee, from best you know, how would does somebody without a job living in the White House for free afford million, at least a million dollars a month in legal fees? Because he's also countersuing people like the computer repair shop. And networks for and uh, Rudy Giuliani. Where does he get a million dollars? Do you think that's a valid question? Of course, it's a valid question. Now, we know that he's an extraordinary artist, even though he's never had an art class and never done it before. Kind of like his uh, position on the board of Burisma. He just falls into these fantastic and lucrative deals. So now he's blowing paint through a straw and creating half million dollar masterpieces that are being scooped up by people who I'm sure are extraordinary um, art aficionados, but they also happen to be pals of his dad, or maybe they want an appointment to something. Yesterday, in an extraordinary move, even for someone like you who's seen it all, Speaker McCarthy is now ousted. Ken Buck, who's on television right now, is trying to justify being one of the eight to get rid of him and not one of the 210 that wanted to keep him. And now people are mentioning Donald Trump as a possible speaker. He turned around and answered that question in a, in a media scrum probably 10 minutes ago. He says, I'm interested. You know, it's interesting. I mean, but oftentimes my names comes up. We'll have to see about that. But I'd like to be a help. I'll tell you. And I was surprised to see what happened. You think he should be, take the job? Oh, I doubt he would. But wouldn't it be a disruptive and interesting thing if he did? I, I mean, I can't imagine more fun than letting Donald Trump decide which committees Nancy Pelosi is going to serve on and uh, how Adam Schiff will be able to be removed from his office back to some uh, janitor's closet somewhere. But the sad thing for me about what happened yesterday was that somehow eight Republicans couldn't get enough Republicans to go along with them. So their ideas must not have been all that popular. 
210 Republicans versus eight. And so they went over to the Democrats and they got the squad and AOC and Pelosi and Schiff and all the crazy bunch uh, to vote with them so that they could get done what they wanted. I don't know what they're so proud of. I would be ashamed of myself if I only represented 4% of the Republican caucus and 2% of the entire House of Representatives. And that's the most that I could get to go along with my ideas and somehow make people think that, that I had come up with a brilliant strategy. So, uh, you know, I'm sure they have their reasons. I know they're out there trying to sell them now. And there are a lot of people who think they're heroes because they really stuck it to the establishment. But, Brian, when you only have eight people out of 220 that think like that, you might want to rethink whether you're very persuasive and whether your argument holds water. I would think so, Governor Huckabee. Uh, absolutely. I just got a couple of things. You know, we made a pretty Steve Scalise made it clearly yesterday calling up members. He's going to run for speaker to replace him. Uh, Jim Jordan has just confirmed he is also running for speaker. Uh, I was just a uh, side note for Jim Jordan, for Chip Roy, for Scott Perry, all to be backing as a conservative as it gets, all to be backing uh, McCarthy. And he still lost. Don't tell me Matt Gates did it because McCarthy wasn't conservative enough. Uh, what are your thoughts about Jim Jordan? Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, Steve Scalise? Scalise, Jordan, Byron Donalds, there's a lot of guys who would be terrific. There's not a doubt about that, and they'll be competent. But the moment they get in there, if they don't do what Matt Gates wants, what makes us believe that he won't do it to them? Uh, the saddest thing that McCarthy agreed to was the one – person being able to call for a vacate of the speaker's chair. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen again. That rule needs to be changed. I want you to know, Matt Gates was my congressman when I was living in Florida for a few years. I helped him when he ran. I had two fundraisers at my personal home for him, helped him in every way I could. But I've just been real disappointed. He's a smart guy and he's articulate, but he let his personal animus toward Kevin McCarthy cloud good judgment. The Democrats stay together. They may fight in the closed room, but when they get out in public, they're all singing from the same sheet of music. And what Matt Gates did yesterday was not only divisive to the party, but it really showed a lack of discipline and a lack of long thinking. And, you know, sometimes you can cook your food by putting it on the fire and gently cooking it till it's edible, or you can throw it, you know, in an explosion and, you know, see what happens. Yesterday was an explosion. It was not a cooking exercise. And Republicans need to start thinking about the long game. And yesterday they didn't. They blew the place up and they thought somehow they should be congratulated for it. I'm sorry. I'm not one that's uh, patting them on the back for what they did because it makes the Republicans look divided and, and foolish and petulant. And it gives the Democrats a huge victory. And for the Democrats to have to save Matt Gates and the other seven, I would be embarrassed if I were in that group. So, by the way, he's in a safe seat. He can do whatever he wants. He was fundraising on the fly. He says the reason he's doing that uh, on, in real time is because he doesn't take money from uh, lobbyists. Well, you know, it's up to you. If you want to take money from lobbyists, you can do it. A lot of times lobbyists have good points, uh, and you want to hear their side. doesn't mean you have to do what they do. But that doesn't mean that you vote for your conscience at the same time you look to raise money off it, in my view. But you, you know the reality of politics more. Here's what he said is the reason behind it. Cut seven. The reason Kevin McCarthy went down today is because nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy has made multiple contradictory promises, and when they all came due, he lost, he lost votes of people who maybe don't even ideologically agree with me on everything. Take, for example, my colleague from South Carolina, Ms. Mace. She's, she has different views than I do on a variety of subjects, but what we had in common, Kevin McCarthy lied to all of us. So he acts like he lost. 210 people think he's not a liar, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's what I find amazing. He said because, uh, you know, he didn't have the confidence. Well, he had the confidence of 210. Matt had the confidence of seven. I didn't major in math in college, but, Brian, I can pretty much figure this one out, that 210 is a pretty much bigger number than seven. Here's what I don't understand. When does the Republican Party and the Republicans in the House, particularly some of the dissidents, when do they understand that Politics is relatively simple. It's 50% plus one, you win. Under that, and you lose. And we can't win uh, if we keep sliding people off. And one other point, even if McCarthy had pushed for some of the things that Matt Gates and some of these other wanted, 
and he got them through the House, which might not have happened because you have some House members, Republicans, who wouldn't have gone along with some of the, the ideas. But if you could have, it would have died a quick death, I mean sudden death in the Senate. And for some reason, if it miraculously passed there, Joe Biden would never have signed it. So if we really want to see an agenda accomplished, go out and sell your ideas, get a bigger majority in the House, uh, get the Senate, win with the big majority there, and elect the president who's a Republican. Now you can get something done. All right. Uh, Governor Huckabee, it is frustrating that people don't even understand how it works, and they do this for a living. Well, they don't want to decide. They don't want to um, let people know how it works. They just want to take stands. Uh, so we'll see. The appropriations bills didn't get out because they couldn't agree in committee how to put them onto the floor because they didn't come up with a consensus. I don't know if you blame the speaker for that. I, you, you tell me. Uh, Governor, uh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. It's a frustrating time. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.